Hello, this is Pick, and this is a guide for petrochemistry in FTB Neotech and in general the modern industrialization mod. To get started, you're going to need the oil drilling rig multi block, so this is something you can typically make in the mid game. You can see for its recipes there are different drills you can use. This one is specific to Neotech, of course, because this isn't a modern industrialization fluid. You can use virulent mix to get oil early if you so desire, or you can just go stainless steel and get shale oil. You also might notice that these have an EMC value, so you could use an energy condenser or something to power your production if you so desire. I automated them normally in my playing world, but you know, you do you. So if we look at what we have here, we have a distillation tower, and this takes input fluids and distills it into various output fluids, and it keeps it at the same millibucket ratio. So this separates these fluids out into different products and normally it would start with the one on the left on the bottom in JEI and go to the one to the right on top but you can also manually override them to have them go out of order. I would recommend having a trash can for each of your various fluids. This means that you won't overproduce on one of them and then have it be full and then have the buffer stop it from making the other ones. So all of these then get sent into these various destinations the helium is something that will be used separately for stuff like cryofluid later, but mainly for our oil byproducts, we want the, of course, sulfuric crude oil, and we also want our sulfuric naphtha. This, both of these get hydrogen, hydrogenated, and that turns them into, that turns them into the uh, unsulfurized byproducts. And of course, you want to store that sulfuric acid and void the rest. So, this distillation tower could be any size you want. There's also a separate distillery block, but you might want to be uh, careful because this only gives you one of the products, and of course, that's not worth it. You want this big multi-block to make sure you get everything. If you have an output that's a uh, tower that's smaller than the recipe calls for, you will only produce one of the outputs, or the one that goes on the bottom. So if we look at this distillation tower, this one is running, as you can see, crude oil, and that's turning the crude oil into sulfuric light fuel, heavy fuel, and naphtha. And with that, we can see that we are producing each of these, and like before, we have these sulfurized fuels. You need to react these with hydrogen to turn them into their non-sulfurized byproducts, and again, manage the sulfuric output waste. Now, I am just using a cold boiler, a small boiler here, to make steam, and that turns the steam into the chemical reactor, and once this uh, has enough naphtha in it, it will run, and it will turn it into uh, steam cracked naphtha, and then that's what goes into this distillation tower here. And this is, of course, the big one. It makes eight different outputs, and you need to manage all of them. It looks complicated, but it's not as bad as it sounds. So I'll be going over each of these and telling you the gist of what it does. Now, the first one is methane. That would be, that has exactly one purpose, to get sent through the electric blast furnace to make more acetylene. So you're just making acetylene with this. And of course, I have a little storage buffer here. And acetylene reacts with hydrochloric acid. You can get hydrochloric acid by combining hydrogen and chlorine. And of course, you're going to need a supply of salt and water for that. Water is easy to get an infinite supply of. And if you're drilling, you have plenty of salt, I would hope. React those together, make hydrochloric acid, and then get those combined with the acetylene to make vinyl chloride. Now, there are different ways you can process this uh, vinyl chloride into polyvinyl chloride. Same goes for ethylene and uh, styrene butadiene rubber. But what I used is chromium because at this point I had chromium automated and it also gives a higher yield. You can see that you get more fluid as a result than just using lead. And so we have some PVC in here and that's the end of the first processing chain. This is our first byproduct that we have major uses for. Then we have the outputs of ethylene. Ethylene can go into, be combined with uh, benzene, 
and that gets turned into ethyl benzene, which just happens to be another one of the byproducts. So all of this can get turned into ethyl benzene, but you might also want to make ethanol out of it, as if we take our excess ethylene, combine it with that sulfuric acid we're making tons of, and water, we get ethanol, which is a little hard and annoying to get, as normally you'd be using sugar solution for a very awful ratio, and it's also just very slow, even if the ratio wasn't so bad. So, by combining ethanol with, uh, we have propene here, propene gets turned into acrylic acid with water, and you combine the ethanol and the uh, acrylic acid, I never actually set that as an output, but that gets turned into diethyl ether and water, and the diethyl ether can be uh, combined, I didn't quite mention it before, I, I kind of missed it, but if you combine light fuel and heavy fuel, you get diesel, and if you combine the diesel and the diethyl ether, uh, I guess this was not given any power, but now this makes boosted diesel, which is a very good fuel for diesel generators. This, this is almost the best one. It's the best one in the normal mod, but in this mod pack, I believe there is one stage beyond that. Yeah, you have force infused diesel, which is 2200 millibuckets, uh, EU per millibucket, whereas with the regular boosted diesel, it is only 800. So it is a large power increase if you want to go with that liquid fuel infrastructure and you're hurting for power in the mid game. And then I believe I've gone over all of them except for one. This is toluene and toluene. Oh, I never got a tank of nitrogen. Uh, you can use a vacuum freezer to obtain some nitrogen if you want. And then uh, you would just, oh, you would get liquid air and then centrifuge that to get nitrogen. But I'm just going to skip that step because this is mainly about the petrochemistry here. And so if we have all of these ingredients, we combine them, we make industrial TNT, and that can get turned into nukes or made into various things in the implosion compressor. So you are definitely going to want to set this up by the time you reach the EV stage so that you can get all of these oil byproducts that you're going to need for other things. And then, oh, I did skip one, and that would be butadiene. So this is the last of these processes. Well, if you combine the uh, ethyl benzene, oops. If you combine the ethyl benzene and steam with some iron, this gets turned into styrene. Styrene then gets combined with butadiene to make styrene butadiene, and then that gets combined with some chromium to make styrene butadiene rubber. This is a much better substitute for regular rubber recipes. I guess you can condense rubber if you want, but this is very efficient and uh, easy to transport for getting all of those cables up and running as well as other things you might want rubber for it makes stacks of rubber at a time but yeah this is the entirety of the oil processing it's not as complicated as it looks you just have to be mindful of all of your outputs again remember to have some trash cans for pretty much everything to make sure that the system doesn't stop and of course you're going to want to make sure you have the power to support all of this but it's a little slow at the start, of course, but as you make more of these uh, various products, you'll be able to support more of a robust system. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Not, not a very long uh, video today, but you know, that's just the uh, nature of the project, I guess. So thanks for watching. This has been Pick. I'm glad to have seen you, and I hope to see you again.